Well, oh wow, that is, hello. Am I a bit loud? I'm gonna hold it here and then we'll go from there. Hello everyone, how are we doing? Um, welcome to this slightly different uh, bit of service. We are gonna have an interview. Um, my name is Liam, uh, in case you don't know me. I'm the guy usually looking like a lobster sat on the box back there. Um, I also have the uh, privilege of being part of a team here, serving in different ways. Um, and I've also got the privilege of interviewing Kat. Oh, wow. And James. Yeah. There it is, yeah. <laughs> um, can we, I've got, I'm interviewing Kat. Yeah. There we go, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, these guys are a part of what's called the uh, BRT, the Building Revitalization Team. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so these guys uh, are part of that team. That team is uh, incredible. They have done a lot over the last year, and we're going to have a chance to hear from these guys um, in a second. But I'm just going to thank God for um, the uh, finance that's going to come our way, and then we'll get into the interview there. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for the great gifts that you give us. Thank you for um, your provision. I pray, God, that you will um, help us to use the resources you've given us wisely, and I pray you'll help us to use them well. Um, I pray you'll be with us now as we chat about the future vision and the excitement that it is around um, the practical use of this building. In your name, amen. Cool, so as I said, this is Kat and James, but um, I'm gonna give you guys a chance to introduce yourself. So tell us a little bit about who you are, um, what you do, uh, in case these wonderful people don't know who you are. Thank you, Liam. Thank you very much. I, You're welcome. Can, can I, before we go any further, can I just say, most of you won't have noticed Steve's socks, but at the end of the gathering, if you want to just check them out, they're quite incredible. If you're on the front row, you'll have seen them. If you're further back, you won't have. But I just think it's important to recognize them this morning. They are beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, I'm Kat. If you are new to Lighthouse, I am married to Trev. Trev, at some point in our marriage, decided he was being called to be a vicar. Um, and then lots of people then like to say, oh, you're your vicar's wife. I'm married to Trev, and he became a vicar. He was a youth worker and did at one point want to become a physio and dentist, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Artist. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, sorry. My background um, was in fashion, the fashion industry. I was in it for 10 years. I trained. Um, I have a BA honours, uh, thanks to Trev. I have the honours um, in fashion and Ooh. design. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I, on the team, originally founded... I'm not really, God does it, doesn't he? But originally founded the BRT, which is the Building Revitalization Team. It was actually a working name in principle. It was never meant to stick, and then it stayed, didn't it? We were like, we can't think of a better name. What, what other names were in the, in the mix? There weren't any others. We uh, just okay. went, we have to call ourselves something. You know, like <laughs> you can workshop for too long on a logo or a name for something. We just went, let's run with it. So <laughs> yeah. Building Re Revitalization Team, abbreviated to BRT, is what we have become. Um, and uh, James, I'm going to hand over to you now. Uh, so, yeah, I'm James. And um, so my background is I'm an electrician. I've been working in the building industry for 20 years nearly um, and been in church for, yeah, all my life. Um, and it's, yeah, I don't know how I became to come on the team, but it's been, yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, you and Lucy very kindly dropped oh, yeah. some uh, cookies at the door, and then I think the next conversation we had with you was, if you need anything done around the site... Uh, yeah, I regret that already. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's been good. It's nice to be a part of the team. It's nice to use um, some skills I've gained over the years to be a part of this um, great project. Um, yeah, I don't know what else you need to say. That's it. James is amazing, by the way, and so is Kat. These guys are awesome. So, yeah, woo, indeed, yeah. These guys are incredible. Um, and this, this is a big moment. Like this James is a big doesn't moment. go behind the microphone. He sits <laughs> no, behind the desk. I'm a back of house person. Ja James, like, actually, James is at, like this is a brave moment, and I'm we're proud of that. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, so the building, right? So we are all sat here. We're aware that it's a bit nippy. It's a bit cold, um, and there's lots of things that we want to do to this building to help make it like just better for our communities, right? So. Tell us a little bit about the vision behind what it is you want to do with this building to make it just so much better for us to serve our local area. 
Um, yeah, so I think the vision for the building was almost preset for those who have been on the journey um, to planting in this area, for those who have been part of uh, this church community for many, many years. There was a number of uh, sort of objectives, I'd say, um, about things that needed kind of correcting with the site. And there'll be a few around the room that will be nodding, going, gosh, it's been a long time um, that we've wanted to see certain things. Um, and some of those were um, level access, uh, funny enough, heating uh, in this main space. Um, and um, there was also obviously a number of other things, but those were kind of the first sort of two things that we were kind of preset in a sense before we'd arrived. But I think uh, once we got here, it was quite clear that actually um, we have an opportunity to make a long-term difference. Um, and so we wanted to look at the site as a whole and say, what is it God wants to do with this site, which will, as I was sort of saying earlier, um, allow it to be the vessel that enables the vision. And so the vision needs to come first. And so I think for us, the vision was we wanted to create a space that is warm, welcoming, that is versatile, that is accessible, um, and that um, is future-proofed. I think it's very often very easy to look at a space and think, what do we need now? Actually, what we need to be thinking about is what is God calling us to do in the future? And we don't want to limit him. And so I think what one of the first things we were really, really clear about is we want to create something or we want to see something created that has the opportunity to change should God want to do something very different. And so that's the picture for the whole site. Um, later on, there's a bit of a video about what that looks like. Um, but that was the kind of very, very original kind of vision as we kind of gather together and has kind of remained what I'd say we've set ourselves against. So every step has been, um, how can we look at this and make sure we future-proofed it? So it, and just as an example of that, even to the point where um, we looked at a We've looked at a mezzanine level, sort of coming off that balcony. Um, so let's make sure we put the structural work in, should we ever want to do that. We probably won't do that right now, but let's make sure it's been thought of and it's there. So everything around the site has been thought through in immense detail as a team. Yeah, I think something as well to note is that the church has been out 100 years, and 20 years ago they moved into the hall. Um, and actually even then, the previous vicar, Nigel, had grand plans, but it just wasn't feasible at the time. So it's quite, it's great that we can be the people that are at the church that are able to facilitate us coming back into this space that's been worshipped in for 100 years and actually be back in this part of the church. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's really excited about it because it was definitely a, a dream of Nigel to get back in here. And sadly, he couldn't in his time make that happen, but it's quite nice we can kind of take that on and do that next step in the journey of it. Yeah, totally. And you're talking about the history of the place. Like, that's something that's really important to recognize, right? Like, this church has been here for, like, 100 years. Um, and up until recently, we had someone who was part of this church pretty much from the time that it was planted, right? And so that is incredible, 100 years. And there's amazing stories about, like, when Birmingham was bombed and, like, bombs missed the building, which was, like, incredible. Like, it'll be, like, bomb, bomb, miss the church, bomb, bomb. And, like, it's just incredible to be able to um, serve as part of the history of the place, right? And that's, that's, that's incredible. Um, but obviously, the building at the moment looks very different to what it did when we first... I don't know if you guys... Who's been here since, since we started? Like, the plant was here? Who's been here since way back when? Fantastic. So, like, actually, like, this site looks so different now to even when I first started coming here a couple of years ago. Um, so, um, and in my mind, probably to, to better. But, James, what, what has been happening? Like, tell us some of the things that have changed since, since um, we've been here. Yeah, so some of the stuff is kind of small but great bits, like we've added new heating in, so some of these radiant heaters we've added. Um, we've had new AV gears going in, the TVs, or speakers and, and stuff on stage. The stage has gone in, because originally we were kind of facing in that direction. Um, and some slightly larger bits, we've had a new servery putting down the far end, and a new kitchen's gone in recently. Um, we've had a bit of heating here and there done, and um, it's kind of upgrading of a few bits, um, some lighting and things like that. So some of it seems quite small, but quite significant, especially for the office staff with some heating was definitely a, a bonus for you guys. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then obviously the chairs of late as well, we've had changed and the pews have, have gone. So it's kind of, 
slow but steady progress over the last two years with some of the, I say smaller bits, getting a kitchen is not small. In the grand scheme of things, it probably will be, but yeah, some little bits has been quite nice to, yeah, nice to do. Mm, totally, and like, again, talking about the longevity, like these chairs have been bought with longevity in mind. So like, it's not like we're looking to get new chairs anytime soon. That server area back there, that's longevity in mind. The plan is with that. And it's all about like focusing on the fact that we can use this place to serve our community better, right? That's the whole point. That's the whole idea is that we will be able to serve our community better. Um, and I guess moving on a little bit, Kat, what what are the plans for the site? Like, what give us give us some of the give us some of the lowdown. Um. I don't know if we should do the video at this point. I think, don't think that so. might. Well, you don't think so? I'm no. asking you. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> we have a video in a minute. There are. So I think one of the things that's quite interesting at the moment, um, now we're exploring funding, is a number of the new funding pots that are coming on stream are about c creating spaces um, and. Three years ago, when we were first sort of looking at this, we were kind of like, ha this site is enormous. I mean, if you haven't been around the whole thing, do. But it is huge. But it's quite disjointed. But And it's also an amazing asset for the local community. But then it almost can make us a little bit invisible in that. So we were kind of like, how do we create this site to be cohesive, a whole, still accessible for the local community, we can use it. Um, and in a sense, what we looked at was creating zones um, so that, that everything would kind of link together. Um, so for instance, just to give a kind of example, and um, it's actually not part of the video, so it's probably quite a good example, is the West End, um, the, our architect Gavin, who has been phenomenal. And if you ever get to meet him, I honestly would love you to just thank him from the bottom of your heart because he has worked in a way with us which has gone beyond anything. Um, normally working with an architectural firm, you are literally charged for a line. Um, and he has poured himself in because he's understood the project um, in a way and resourcing it in a way beyond anything we could have imagined. But he has basically designed um, a west entrance. Our, our vision for it was really that it would be level access. We desperately need level access down at that end. But as we it was developed, it was kind of like, actually, this would be, given coming off the back of COVID, what if we're in a position where we've yet again got to be outside? So actually, the, even the uh, steps have been designed to be kind of auditorium, so we could sit out there. They're deep enough to be able to sit out there. There would be benches. Um, the level access has been incorporated with a bench um, and potentially a bit of a community garden. It could also be an overflow for kind of what will hopefully be uh, a cafe area at different points that would therefore have food pantry and other things that we've kind of talked about along the way. Um, so every area of the site has been developed with that kind of sense of we want to see connection form. And I think one of the things that massively inspired me is that our if you don't know, I'm just about to tell you where we live. We live literally over there. Loads of people don't realize we live right next to the church. In a vicarage, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Um, but our, our bedroom looks out over our back garden, which runs basically all the way along this wall. Um, but during the winter, you could kind of see right out into what is the community um, garden over there, which, um, and there's some benches. And two ladies throughout COVID, when you were allowed to kind of meet, would go and meet at lunchtime on the bench. And I just thought that is gorgeous. And I want us to take that as a legacy that whatever we do creates and invites the opportunity for people to connect. But um, yeah, I'd love us to kind of watch the video, which will explain a huge amount more about all the changes to the site.
Wow, that's a big vision, right? That is a big vision, right, guys? Something to be excited about? Ooh. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's a woo over here. Thank you. We are, do you know what? We are allowed to get excited. We are in a church building. We are a family of church. We're allowed to get excited. That is a lot of changes. Like, there's, you've got a whole new hall. The link building, which goes between the hall and the main space here, in case that wasn't clear for anyone, that link building will be where the cloisters are now. Yeah, exactly. So that would mean that you can go continuously from here straight through to the hall without having to go outside in the cold or the wet or the hot weather if we get it. Um, and um, that, is, that is a lot of stuff that is going to change to enable us to be able to serve communities. But obviously, we, um, we can't, can't just go ahead and do it, right? So um, James, talk to us about the permissions that we've been, we've been given for, for the, all the process or whatever. Yeah, so it's... Uh, because this building, the building is beautiful, and we're very lucky it is, but it means it's, it's grade two listed, which brings a bit more complexity to the building project. So not only have we got standard planning, we've got listed building consent, and um, there's a sort of a body called the DAC, who are the Darsison Advisory Committee, I think, and they advise somebody else called the Chancellor of Birmingham. And effectively, that Chancellor person gets the say on what we can do to the building. Um, what we have needed to do is work with the DAC to come up with a solution that is uh, sympathetic to the building, but also does what we need it to. Um, that building, that permission has taken slightly longer than anticipated. It's taken the uh, best part of two years now, I think we're on, and we are so close. Um, we've we have pretty much got the nod for everything we want to do, which is unbelievable. Hey, come on, guys! Yeah, that is massive. amazing. That's genuinely, let's a big go. Thing. That's incredible for us. Um, there's a few little things left, but nothing we are too concerned about. Um, but it is incredible. I think, yeah, it's definitely been a, a long two years, but I'm so pleased that we're there, and yeah, we're really excited to see see that come to life. I've not seen that in probably 12 months. That little fly through, so it's really exciting, and yeah, reminds us of what this building will be, and it's going to be incredible. God's done it right. Yeah, that is amazing, yeah, guys. Absolutely. God is God has been uh, doing it, which is amazing. And as a church, we just want to say a huge thank you, right, to not only you guys but also everyone who's been involved in the process so far. 
Um, I think as a church, let's just give everyone a round of applause for those who've been involved. They, you've all done an amazing job. Guys, come on now, let's go, let's go. Yeah, that's better. Woo! Awesome. I don't want to go too gospel, but uh, can I get an amen? Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it's just incredible. Um, and uh, it's a, there's a long process, as many of us are getting there, right, Kat? But, um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. Um, yeah, like as James said, it is a real time to celebrate that we have the permissions and, um, you know, the journey we've been on. We've There's been a lot of learning curves with it. Um, and as James said, it's taken that little bit longer than we had anticipated. But I think we also stepped into it slightly naively thinking, let's Absolutely. just crack on with this um, and uh, discover that actually there is a really helpful process um, of discernment about making those changes. Um, so yeah, uh, what it has done. So just on that, what it has done is kind of we've overthink things probably, and like you mentioned about planning for the future, and that's been quite an important process for us. That with Gavin, the architect, and um, many other people inside the church and outside, has shaped what we've done, and that has this led us to overthink it in a good way. So um, yeah, which is quite important. Absolutely. Um, and some of the detail you're probably not aware of from the video is um, one of the major barriers that we felt around the site was level access. Um, and we didn't want to kind of get people in the building and then it still become a barrier. Um, and so the whole site has been designed so that there's level access around the entirety of the site. And what that will mean in this particular... Sorry, when you say level access, that means accessibility. Yeah, right? As level in access e around the site. Easy yeah. access for those who yeah. may have... A yeah, cool, Exactly great. that. Um, so what that means for this sort of main space is that there will be a couple of different levels around, but you will basically enter from either end at a level, um, and then it will go up at different stages, but will give accessibility to all that area over there. Um, and just basically all around the site through to the link building. So there won't, it won't be as much of a barrier in terms of people feeling like, um, you know, they have to make compromises depending on um, their ability to get around the site. So um, we're really excited about that. It also means, so one of the things with um, this floor is it is a really significant architectural floor believe it or not. Um, it's a quite a significant example of um, the architect's work. Um, and But the floor is deteriorating beyond um, anyone's expectations in terms of uh, length of time. So what's going to happen is there'll be a floating floor over this floor, preserving this floor. Not that you'll see through it. It sounds like it's like a kind of <laughs> being able to see a Roman road. Yeah, say display it like a mosaic that you often <laughs> yeah, get a Roman road. Like right? uh, we won't know, basically, it's under there. Um, but it will just give us... And then within that floor, which is why the process has been so complicated, is that James and the architect and the m &E consultants have been working on <laughs> that floor being able to be future-proofed so that if we need to make changes to the building if we go actually we want to do that over there we just have to lift up panels and make the alterations rather than kind of having to dig anything up so it has been a hugely involved and as James said very 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 detailed process of how do we make sure we're future preaching this future proofing this space because we want to see it being able to be used for whatever God has intended, however the Holy Spirit wants to use it in the future. We don't want to create a barrier of need right now. We want a future proof for beyond wherever he wants to go. Amazing. And um, these things come at a cost, right? So um, can you give us like some form of breakdown on costs? Yeah, so I think we've got some very helpful raising the funds uh, graphics. Um, and so we are looking at two streams, really. We're looking at grants being one of the most significant ways that we'll raise funds. But then after that, we're looking at gifts and pledges. And I think as a church, we have to be really responsible um, when we're saying about gifts and pledges. This is a season that's very difficult for very many people. And so I think within that, um, I was actually talking with Steve earlier because I just felt this real sense of conviction this morning that um, if we're going to talk about money, we've got to talk about it in a way that actually for some people, it's really hard. They're in serious debt. Um, money's very, very tight. And I never want us to be a church that is going in one direction and leaving everybody else behind that's feeling like they just can't 
be that person, and actually that becomes a barrier. We are the body of Christ, and so the body at times can hurt, and the whole body hurts because that part is hurting. And so, but at the same time, God does call us to ask him for things that are beyond our own understanding. And I think we're in a position where we're doing a big ask and we're saying to God, okay, if this is your vision for the site, you need to provide the funds. And so we're stepping out in faith. um, And what we've looked at in terms of the project is it will be phased. So I think some of you who journeyed with us from the beginning, we all thought the building would be ready for when we got here. Um, That was again not to be so and I think actually Trev and I came to an understanding quite early on that we had this opportunity to launch and then sort of launch again when the building at the different phases of the building and I think there's something really significant in the where the people of God journey you see it when um, the Israelites were called out of Egypt don't you that those that journey through the different points will have so much richness richness of story and seeing God do amazing things, whether they got frustrated with it or not, they witnessed God doing amazing things. So I think for us, we were like, whilst we were kind of like, oh, we're meant to get this done, we have to trust God that this journey we're on is something he's calling us to do together, and different people will come at different points. And some will, you know, people will join at the point when the building is pretty much done and have no idea that you used to sit with hot water bottles, blankets, you know, thick, thick socks, and you'll be going, oh, it's so warm. They'll be going, oh, okay, why is that such a... I mean, the hot water bottles is, as you said, a highlight for a lot of people. I think we should just keep them anyway. I know, Uh, they are. Like a warm teddy when you're worshipping Jesus. Um, Um, so, So, yeah, so I think what we've done is looked at the building in terms of the site and what will help us get to the next steps. So in terms of the works... Um, We are looking at the hall and the link building being the first works that we do. Um, And the reason for that is, um, well, we firstly, we we need to be aware that at some points during this transition, we're going to need toilets. Um, And so it felt like the hall and the link building were the right place to start. That will kind of be phased in its approach anyway. Um, But the idea is to kind of get the hall set with uh, the new toilet block, and then we can kind of tear down the new toilet, uh, the block, the link building, and kind of re-renovate that. Um, Now, costs is really, really tricky. We had a QS report done, yeah, about 18 months ago, um, of which James and I looked at it and went, gosh, that's so high. We now look at it and go, wish we could do it for that price. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's been, in the building industry, it's really been tough recently, prices are, we have no idea what's happening still week to week. Um, so, yeah, pricing has been incredibly tough. And then contractors build that into their prices, so they, have, they will put an overhead in to cover themselves. Um, so costing at the minute is is a tough gig. So, it, yeah, it's definitely more expensive now than it possibly would have been 18 months, two years ago. Yeah, and, and I think also on that is one of the things we were um, finding was even last year, contractors were booked up years in advance, which meant that, you know, even if we're getting a price then, it could be several uh, years later, could be a completely different price. However, it does, what does seem to have happened is in terms of contractors availability does seem to have eased a little bit, which is to our benefit. Um, So I think what we've put against it is costings that are possibly a little bit higher um, than we're anticipating, but also are well within the reams of what it could genuinely cost. uh, so, yes, yeah, so we're starting with the Hall and Link building. We'll then move on to uh, external access, and that's looking at around about a uh, quarter of a million pounds. External access is the west, so the west entrance, entrance and, and out in the cloisters the co- yeah. and the access to the office. Great. So all having um, much more accessible access. Um, in fact, that access will be the only access that isn't level um, because we just couldn't make it work. You would have had to take up about four square meters or something like that to which just wasn't it's really most of the area out there isn't it um, yeah yeah it yeah. basically we've gone slightly into the vicarage garden and back out again i think oh, to I make think. it work um so it just didn't work so what it will have is it accessible in terms of being able to get someone but it will be a better better access um, and then we'll move on to the main church works which is basically everything in here the doors through um 
acoustics, lighting, fire, whatever. Tell me what Preventing that is. fires, I'm assuming. Yeah, <laughs> fire alarms. <laughs> not creating them. Not having Although a fire pit in the middle is not a bad idea, yeah. right? Get yeah, marshmallows, heat. s'mores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. That's our heating solution. <laughs> Beautiful. With a massive chimney. Um, uh, and the main gathering space will have underfloor heating with also secondary and potentially even third uh, source of uh, heating. Yeah. But at this stage will be uh, two levels of heating um, to try and heat this enormous space. Exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something to note as well, that's expensive. We, we are fully aware that's a lot of money and it makes us all feel a little bit sick. But the building has not had any work done to it for 25, 30 years. And actually to make it a building that is is needed in the community and a building that we can use to do incredible stuff in the community. It's a cost that we believe is worth it. Um, but yeah, just to know, we know it's a lot of money. We're not, yeah, we are aware of that, but things come at a cost, especially in a beautiful building like this. Absolutely, and like the, the fact that we're starting with the hall, that's us investing in like our young people and our children first, also means that um, the nursery that are there at the moment can, can do what they need to do in a better way so there's been real thought, I know, there's been really thought behind the process and what order we do things. So um, it's really, there's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of processing and thought that's gone through. Because um, of time, I'm going to move us on to some of the questions that have come through. So uh, you guys have all written down questions, or some of you have, um, and they've been kind of like filtered into kind of questions that are all similar and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully any questions you've got will be answered. If not then um, you can come and talk to these guys at some point if you've got um, deeper things you want to know, that kind of stuff. So the first set of questions are kind of, I guess, some, some practical questions here. So one of the things is like, how close are we starting to work? How long will it take? Um, those kind of practicality questions. I'm aware that work's not starting tomorrow, um, but I guess any ideas on like how long it might take before work starts. Um, and also there's, there's some thoughts around just like, while the work is going on, has, has there been any practical thoughts around um, what we'll do when the work is going on in terms of like us as a family being able to meet together, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know who wants to take that one first. So um, the whole works we're looking at starting in or around Easter next year. We've kind of, we're looking at funding at the moment, hopefully that'll come through this year. Then we've got to book contractors in and things like that. So we're looking at Easter to start um, for the uh, Horn Link building, the West End work, hopefully sort of the beginning of next year and then this space um we will be the aim is to start next year so probably quarter three next year something along those lines again it depends on funding if the funding comes through tomorrow does brilliant. that mean the autumn in yeah in sorry <laughs> apologies autumn next year um <laughs> yeah for um yeah for this main space is our currently our working kind of theory um do you want to i don't disagree with you um that's the hope that <laughs> um, it will be um, that we will need to find various solutions to keep various things running. Um, and it will probably have an impact of uh, uncomfortable at times. Um, other times it may just seem like, uh, you know, this is fine. I haven't even noticed it's happening. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so there is, once we have a bit more understanding of our funding, and just to, to kind of give you a bit more detail on that, you can't raise funds until you have your approvals in place. You can't go to grant funders without an approval, um, which is why it, it, sometimes you want to try and run it at the same time. But we felt that... Um, until we had the approvals, and particularly some of it was quite uncertain because like I was saying earlier about the floor, it is really significant. And so to get it right was really important. And for everybody involved in agreeing that process, it was really important that everybody felt that was right. Um, that floor actually in one sense has been the most significant thing in holding back all the project. <laughs> Um, which has therefore meant that we've kind of then got all the permissions, um, but we now need to look at grant funding. And, that, and with that, it has now opened the door, but it kind of feels like in terms of planning the works, we're still kind of juggling, have we got the finances there against, let's start the works. So there is no answer to say da 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 da, which I have to say gives me sleepless nights because that's how I operate. Um, but we're trusting God that, you know, we've got some 
brilliant contractors that are quoting for us at the moment that we're really excited to potentially be working with. And we're just looking at how we line it up against the financial process. Yeah, and with that, the where the one of the questions is where the finance is coming from. And that's a big question, right? Because obviously the numbers are a bit daunting. So um, just quickly, because um, I'm aware of time, um, just one of those things have been like, is it where, where is the finance coming from? I mean, some of it was answered earlier, but... So we have some original funding that came with the plant um, that we have tried to ring fence as best as possible. We then um, are looking at, at doing a couple of gift days um, and pledge days. Um, and then we have a grant writer uh, called Keely, who some of you might have met at Celebration Sunday. She was over in the hall and she's working with us to uh, write some uh, funding bids. Um, and so, um, some new funding pots are coming online next month, um, which could radically change how we apply for funding. Um, so there's different streams. Um, but I think for me, um, it's one of those, I think Trev's going to go on to talk about it in a second, so I won't kind of steal his, uh, what he's going to say. But for me, it's about kind of saying, okay, God, what, what is it you want me to do in this? What, how do I kind of get involved and what do you want me to give? Yeah, totally. Um, I'm really aware of time, so um, I'm going to ask two more questions, and I'm sorry if your questions get answered. Um, please do feel free to come and talk to these guys. Yeah, I'll be here at the end. Yeah, or, or if you, later Good in the job. week, you want to email us, hello at lighthouse dot ch hello house online, that's it, hello at lighthouse online dot church. Um, so, uh, one of the things has been about growth, like, um, and particularly about kind of our young people and our children and growth with the kids' work and stuff. So, and also growth in here, like we're already pretty full. So how will the work impact the kind of, I guess, the more, the more people who are coming along, li along with us? So I think, I guess in some ways, possibly that's a hard question to answer because you don't know what the full plan is in terms of use of the uh, building. But To be honest, I love that problem. Yeah. Um, and I welcome that problem. Yeah. I'd love to find solutions to that yeah, problem yeah, about totally. growth than a declining church. Mm. If I'm honest, if, if God's radically doing something, it will find solutions. And yeah. um, we already have quite a number of potential ideas. One of the reasons, uh, if you haven't seen the tower being developed in the kitchen, actually above it is a mezzanine level, which has a, a room. It was going to just be storage. We've actually decided it probably could be um, space that we can use throughout the works yeah. in some kind of way. So we have some ideas yep. it literally depends on where we start and what mm. finances we get yeah so i welcome that problem totally. um, and i'm excited Absolutely. to resolve it and we really want like we want the problem of having like 50 young people every sunday coming to hang out with us we want the problem of having people not being able to fit in because they want to know who jesus is that's the whole point of the building work right so that's amazing um one of the questions was just about accessibility i hope that's been answered around um, more access being on the front around the side as well, ramps everywhere and that kind of thing. If you want more details on that, please do look at the plans or come and talk to these guys. Um, my final question for you, because of time, is um, around just the hope for this place. So I'm going to just read it as is. What is the hope for Lighthouse with the work being done and for the people of Birmingham? What is the hope in this building work going on here? Uh, looking at James just in case, he's like, yes, I've got the answer to that. Burning with um, uh, if the hope for the place is that um, we see God continue what he's doing. So we already have a supply and demand issue with the hall. Um, and we have to be quite careful about just completely giving away our only uh, warm assets at the moment. Our, how amazing is that? We have this yeah. supply and demand issue and we would love to use it. As the site gets developed, you know, that can be you, the hall can be used independently of this part of the site. I mean, that is going to radically change how we do mission and ministry within our church. Um, it being warm, it having spaces, the, this gathering space, the reason we actually put the panels up was to, to trial run what it could look like. Um, but actually, this will be able to be shut off. And so the, the welcome space will become independent of this space. So as a whole, I think the hope is that what God has already started, we will see enabled even more by what he wants to do in terms of the changes to the site. Yeah, totally. And I'm aware that like, there's stuff like we're seeing needs of the community, hence food pantry, right? Like there was a real issue with food poverty in um, Erdington that we come across. I had the privilege of working with families and young people in Erdington. I see it all the time.
the food pantry, the work over there is going to help us enable to enable us to be able to serve the communities in that way. Having Hello, there we go. Uh, having more room to, to connect with more young people and families and children in the area. Um, and also, like, I guess some of this stuff is led by you guys. Like, things that are going on have been led by people coming to us and saying, I really want to do this. I think God is going here. And that's, that's we've got Oasis. We've got, um, we've got little lights going on, all that kind of stuff. So the hope is that we will have more and more ability to be able to connect with and serve people in Birmingham. Absolutely, and and the 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 site isn't the, the vision. Thing. It's not the thing. No. The site isn't the vision. You, the people of God, are the vision. You enable the vision. The site we would just love to see um, brought in line with what we already see God doing. Amazing. And on that, any more questions? <laughs> do come to it. But um, I'm going to welcome Trev. Give on, give Trev a little clap there. Well done. And thank you to to Kat and uh, and James as well. Awesome. I'm going to hand you to Trev. Uh, thank you, guys. Just want to um, thank you for all that work. And actually, that's uh, what we've seen today is that it's kind of the tip of the iceberg. Um, can someone just pop out to kids to say we've got 10, 10 minutes? Um, just wanted to touch a little bit then what, what this kind of looks like for the future for us. Like we, um, we just really mindful that as Kat was saying that this is a season where actually finances are not the easiest thing but um, we need to be thinking about how this works um, uh, as we've been thinking about this series and today's the final one of the series we've been on building for the future uh, we touched on the first thing was that firm foundation that sense that actually everything needs to be um, built upon Jesus and Paul wrote uh, in one of his letters to the church that actually there is no other foundation than Jesus Christ so first and foremost everything that we do the building work and the ministries everything needs to be based on who Jesus is and then we started to think about then being mission minded and what that looks like about looking out not just looking in it's quite easy when you are doing a building project to get wrapped up in the excitement about what you're doing to the building so that we gain something um, but actually our focus must always be on the thousands of people in our communities who do not yet know Jesus so first and foremost the foundation is Jesus then we need to be mission minded and thinking about who is not part of our community yet how we can serve those people and when we live out those two things, it really just brings us to being generous givers. Um, it automatically kind of becomes our nature that when we look at who is not here and how we can serve other people, we, we become generous in our spirit. We, we want to serve. We want to act upon those people who we see in need and do something about it. So that's where we kind of land today uh, in the final part of our series is about being generous givers and um, thinking about what that does for us and what happens in our spirit. Uh, the Bible is full of stories about uh, money and possessions and giving. It's actually probably mentioned over 2,000 times in uh, Scripture because God knows that this is something significant for us. Um, I grew up as the youngest of three boys. Um, you can imagine what that may have been like. Um, like my brothers would sit on me and tickle me so I couldn't breathe, that kind of fun stuff, or like clamp the hand over my mouth to try and kill me. Just a theme of trying to kill me um, along the way, um, which reminded me of Cain and Abel. The very first story of brothers was fighting uh, each other, and one ended up killing the other, which, I mean, I probably almost died several times growing up with my brothers, but they never quite made it. Um, but the fight started because of... Uh, something around being generous and giving. So God had, um, like, want, like, they were bringing offerings to God, and uh, so Abel was a shepherd, and so he bought the best of his flock to give as an offering to God. Cain was a farmer, and he brought some of the fruits of his harvest, not the best of it. And God looked with favor upon Abel because he had given the best to God. So his recognition of the heart, the stuff on the inside, was that God saw what Abel was like and his spirit was to give the best that he had, whereas Cain's spirit was to hold on to the best and only give to God the kind of what he could get away with. And God actually said to him, like, you need to be watching out because sin is crouching at the door. 
Um, because sometimes when we hold on and when we don't have a generous heart, it becomes all about us and what we can gain. And that is basically our kind of culture around us is a bit like that. There's um, a quote from a guy called Peter Grandich who works with finance uh, all the time with people and helping run charities and other things. He said this, our whole culture is built on the premise that we have um, more money and more stuff to feel happy and secure. That's the kind of materialistic, consumeristic culture that we're in. But he goes on to say that we have too much stuff because we bought into the fabricated myth that more stuff equals more happiness. That's what culture tells us. It's about what can we keep, what we, can we gain, what can we have more of and more of and more of, because that's the way that we get happiness. But Jesus talked of another way. He spoke about um, being generous in giving. And he said this, um, he said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So in Matthew 6, if you read that whole bit, it's, it's about what we actually hold on to and what we give away. What are we willing to give up? God looked with favor upon the offerings that were given him when it was the best. Jesus looked upon with favor when he was in the temple courts, seeing people giving money, rich people giving lots and lots of money, but a poor widow came and gave two small coins worth nothing compared to the amount of money that was given, but he saw the heart, and her heart was that she gave everything that she had. And so it doesn't matter the amount that we give, it's the heart behind what we give that matters. It's a heart issue fundamentally. It's the heart motivation that matters behind giving. If you have hardly any money, but you are able to give something, that's a generous giving. You might be super wealthy and only give a small amount which you can easily afford. That's not giving with a generous heart. When we live out that firm foundation of Jesus, and when we live out being outward-looking, mission-minded people of God, we will be generous with everything, generous with our time, generous with our talents, generous with the money that we have and what we do with that. This fundamentally comes down to our heart issue. God looked with favor upon the offering that was the best, the first fruit. Jesus looked with favor upon the person who gave everything that she had because it's a heart thing, not an amount thing. Otherwise, most of us in the room couldn't reach the heights of a multi-millionaire or billionaire giving away a million pounds. We're like, I would never see a million pounds in my life. Um, and so I can't give that amount away. But what I can give is sacrificially. I can give what God calls me to, however small that may be. The amount doesn't matter. And if you're sat here today, you are probably feeling that there's some sort of call about being part of Lighthouse Church. For Kat and I, we've um, journeyed to be part of this church. We felt really called into ministry here, serving as we came to Gastry and as we um, joined the church and met with the team who were here at St. Mary's, the originals, or the OGs, as I like to call them. Um, and as we journeyed about what God was doing here and felt a real calling into serving in this place, and a team of people and a group of people came from Gastry, uh, people who were here already and others joined. There was this kind of culmination of all of us feeling a sense of calling to serve in our communities in this area. Across Pipe Hayes and Erdington and North Birmingham. If you're here today, my guess is that you also have that sense of calling upon your life too that you want to serve in your communities, that you feel that God has, wants to use you to bring about something new and exciting in your communities. And I would agree, that's what we're here for. Fundamentally, God wants us to be those that would serve, those that would serve others, that we would reach out to those people who don't yet know him, that we would make disciples, that we would teach people about who Jesus is, but that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus. I spoke last week about the fact that the local church is the hope of the world. We are the plan that Jesus had for his church to advance, for the church to grow, for his church to be outreaching, to be blessing others. We are his plan. Now, that kind of blows me away, freaks me out in equal measures, um, because God is, looks at me and chooses me to be part of that in this area. But he also looks at each one of us 
and says, I have chosen you. In John chapter 15, Jesus said um, that we are chosen and appointed to bear fruit that would last. What we sow into this season in this building project is not just about now. It's sowing into the future. It's sowing into the future of this site so that when I'm gone, dead and buried, and um, someone else is the vicar here, there will still be a building that is usable for our community. But also we're sowing into the building of the church, which is the people. We're sowing into things with an eternal significance. Because when we see people give their lives to Jesus, that has shifted their eternal trajectory forever. The stuff that we sow into now will have impact for the future. Not just physical, but spiritual impact. That's what I'm desperate to see. I'm desperate to see people come to know the life-changing transformation, redemption that only Jesus can bring. And my feeling is that if you're here, then you want to be part of that too. So what can we do? Um, we wanted to make this place accessible and visible and versatile for the future. Um, and so there are three things that probably will enable that. Um, Kat, I wonder, and Steve, whether you might just hand those out now. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to give you uh, just a small A5 flyer. And on it, this has just three things that I'd like you to consider to do um, this week and the next week and the following week, is to pray first and foremost. I want us to be a church that prays. I want us to be a church that is praying about our community, praying about um, those people who don't yet know Jesus, um, praying about how we can serve more, what we're called to do, whether we start a new initiative or join something existing, or um, whether it's our community, our neighbors, our streets, our family, to pray into where God is calling us. And that praying for this building project to be successful, which is a kingdom success rather than just a physical success. Um, pray that this building project will enable us as a church to be a church that is accessible and visible and versatile. But also, the ask is that if you feel that you're called here, the ask is really, what would you be able to sow into this building project as, and this church so that we can enable that? Like, that's the thing that I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, is praying into what can Kat and I, and us as a family, what is it that we can give? What can we sow in financially so that we can enable the mission of this church to grow. That's the second thing. And we've got two giving days specifically for that. So on the 5th of November and on the 19th of November, we'll have specific giving days so that anything that is given on those days, whether it's in the bucket or whether it's on contact list or whether it's done online, all of those things will go to the building project specifically. Um, we've set it up on our website at the moment, and it will be on Church Suite. Um, so there's ways to give there as well. So if you go to lighthouseonline.church forward slash give, um, you can find out the different ways that you can give, whether that's a standing order or a one-off. But I'd love us to consider what we might sow in now. That's the significant thing for me, is that we, what we're doing is we're not investing in a physical building. We're investing in the future of God's church in this place the people of God, but also that this place would go on for generations and generations. I'd love to um, be like an old grandparent and tell my kids uh, about what happens and then be able to visit here when I'm in my 90s and see what God's doing then and how exciting that would be. Because what we're doing is sowing into the future. And the final thing is thinking about maybe you feel actually called to pledge. And Pledging is one of those words you probably don't come across very often, but it may be that you feel that actually uh, God has put a, a specific amount of money on your heart that you would give over the next maybe 12 months. And so you will say, actually, that's what I'm pledging to do. I can't afford to give the whole amount at this point, but I'm pledging to this amount for the future. Um, and there'll be ways that we'll talk about how we can do that, uh, how you can let us know that you're pledging this amount, and so we can then offset that against the finances that we need for the next stage. Um, so the first stage that Kat talked about was about the building works, about £300,000. We have some money already from um, Central uh, Develop Strategic Development Fund, uh, which enables us to do it. We're also looking at grants, which will do that. So we're probably around 100000 
probably that we need to raise. Um, it might be other grants, but it's also from us as the church. And so that's the kind of things that we can do practically. We can pray, we can give, and we can pledge. And this is a big ask. I feel really uncomfortable about asking people to give money, but I know that God has spoken about this in Scripture all the way through because he knows it's a big deal. People say that the last thing to get converted is the wallet, and I think that's probably true. Like, we want to hold on to the stuff that we've got, but that's the kind of spirit of Cain, that kind of, I won't give God the best, I'll give him what I can just, you know, the leftovers. I want to be a follower of Jesus who gives him everything that I've got, whether that's sacrificially giving finances, whether it's my time, energy, gifts, talents, whatever it might be, that's what I long to be like. And I wonder whether that may be a challenge for some of us to say, actually, how can we move to the next stage of giving? Whether that's my time or whether it's specifically finances in this stage. That's the challenge. It's tough for me to ask, but I just wonder whether God may be in this. And it's, I don't get to see who gives what, um, fortunately. Um, and so there's, an, there's like a, a between you and God thing. This is nothing that anyone's going to judge you on. No one's going to get to look at it. And so it doesn't matter the amount. Remember that Jesus looked on favor upon the, the widow who came with the small amount of money because it was a heart matter. Fundamentally, it's a heart matter. Why don't we pray together? Um, if you're able to, why don't we stand? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are meeting with us. You're in this place. You're here with us now. We just long to be people who follow you wholeheartedly, that our hearts would be set on giving generously, whether that's everything that we've got through finances or our skills and talents and time, that you would do something in us now. We just want to invite the Holy Spirit to fill us now. You may feel like you want to put your hands out in front of you as a, a symbol of wanting to receive something, holding out your hands to receive. Heavenly Father, we just now ask that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit afresh. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Would you challenge us where we need it, where our hearts have got hard, where we hold on and claw back the stuff that we have rather than giving it generously. Lord, shake us up from where we need it. Um, smooth off those rough edges that we have. Help us to be a people that would follow you wholeheartedly, that when you say, come, follow, we would say, yes, Lord. That we would be those that go wherever you lead us that we would be willing to step into this next season, that we would be willing to risk things for the kingdom, that we would have conversations with people about you, that we would risk being embarrassed because we tell people about Jesus, that we would risk it when it comes to um, what we look like in front of others, that we would be radical disciples of Jesus, willing to give everything that we have for his kingdom and for his glory. Come, Holy Spirit, we invite you to fill us now. Come, Holy Spirit. And just in this moment, why don't you just ask God to start doing those things in you? To challenge and shape you where you need it. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are here working with us. And we ask now that you would continue to fill us afresh, send us out into our week ahead, that we would know you with us. And may you be a people of God that is wholeheartedly following Jesus. May you know his spirit with you each day. May you know the Father's embrace as you face all kinds of challenges. And may you be a generous giver. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you have kids, I would just love to encourage you to go and collect them and thank the team massively for the fact that we've overrun. Um, as I said earlier when we were kind of doing the interview that... Um, 
money is a difficult thing. And for some people, it does trigger pain. It does trigger chaos. It does trigger um, stuff that's going on in them. And we, we don't want to neglect that. And so we have prayer enablers around. Um, Jeannie, I believe, and Georgie. Um, our, our prayer enabler team this morning. So if you would like prayer, do go and see them. We are the body. We are one body. Um, and we would love to get alongside you in that. Um, so uh, if you want someone to pray with you, um, please go and over this area. That's probably easiest to do. If you want to chat to any of the team, James, myself, Kat will be around. Uh, why don't we finish by saying the blessing together as we send our, ourselves into this week ahead. Uh, we speak this over each other now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. It's been great to gather together today. Sorry, it's slightly overrun. There's some significant stuff we need to uh, wrestle with. Um, please do go collect kids if you haven't already. Um, there's also drinks and biscuits probably still available. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday.